are on our way to the European Space Agency. I am very excited to be joined by Ryan Weed, physicist, rocket scientist, and founder of Positron Dynamics. You're working on building faster rockets. Why do we need them? Yeah, so uh, our current rockets are really based on chemical and electric propulsion. How fast can you exhaust things out the back of your rocket? Right. Uh, so we need a, a better way to create faster particles so that we can have more efficient rockets. So you have a startup, Positron Dynamics. Can you just tell us what a positron is? Yeah, so uh, positron is antimatter, so it's very energy dense. So if we have a lot of positrons, uh, we can do interesting things in terms of catalyzing fusion reactions or just generating thrust directly from the positrons. The energy density of, of positrons is you know, incredibly high, so it's about 90 megajoules per microgram. So just so I'm clear about this, Ryan, this isn't like a battery or something. This is basically creating a new method of propulsion. Well, actually, we're not, uh, we're not getting more out than we put in, right? So it takes energy to create the, the radioisotope that emits positrons. Uh, so in, in a sense, it is kind of like a very efficient battery. We just take that battery, um, we put it into a very small spacecraft like the one over here, uh, and then we use it to do propulsion. Do you think man will ever be an interstellar species? Yeah, I think uh, it's not a question of if, just when. Um, you know, it's, with current tech, we can get there in 30,000 years. Um, so, <laughs> yes, it'll take a while, but uh, we will get there. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm investigating ways of uh, getting there quicker, and I think we can do it within our lifetimes. Give us a sense of how long it takes us to, it might take us at the moment, to get to Mars or to get to Pluto. Yeah, so with current technology, it takes us months to get to Mars. Uh, and years to get to the outer solar system. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Pluto, uh, we went there recently, it took 10 years to get there. Voyager 1 at 14 kilometers a second take you know, 45 minutes to go around the world. Okay. Uh, so something a thousand times faster, you're talking about going around the entire world in about three seconds. So really great to meet Ryan at the ESA today. The work he's doing, I think, has the potential to redefine efficiency on a really enormous scale that's likely to inspire manufacturers of the future. This car, for example, has a lightweight aluminum architecture and Jaguar's new Ingenium engine. So together, those deliver almost 71 miles per gallon and extremely low CO2 emissions. While it won't get me around the world in three seconds, it does show how vehicle efficiency is evolving very quickly.